30-minute reviews, beware of spoilers, and exploring hyperspace lanes are all available ad-free. But if you want to support the show, you can go to bewareofspoilers.com and click the support button that's available on the Spotify website. Thank you. Welcome to the uh, Beware of Spoilers. I am Adam. I'm tired today, as you can tell. And uh, I'm in a rush to get to work on time. So, let's see if we can do that. I'm going to say probably not. But, we'll try anyway. Um, either way, um, we're here today to talk about um, the first two episodes of X-Men 97. Which uh, debuted on Wednesday on Disney+. Plus. And it is the continuation of Marvel Studios' animation initiative where they're going to bring more animated content to Marvel Studios. Um, so, I think I should get this out of the way first. I have never watched the original X-Men cartoon from, what's it called, from 1990-whatever, you know, 95. I, th- I think it started in 92. I think it started right before I was born, so by the time it ended, I was too young to be watching Saturday morning cartoons and really being, like, into that, um, so, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, so I, you know, I, I don't have the, the, the generational background with this show to be like, alright, let's watch this and, you know, be... You know, let's see if this is true to the original. I watched the first episode of it a few weeks ago, and I was like, all right, I get get what's going on here. It feels like a faithful kind of X-Men adaptation, down to, like, understanding the X-Men are fundamentally a story about uh, bigotry and injustice, Um, which, you know, for for the early 90s and mid-90s may not have been the most, you know, on top of it thing. I think that it's interesting the way that this, you know, this, this world exists. Like, if you've never read a comic or only watched the, the movies, you probably have a very low opinion of Cyclops. I think that they did a great job making Cyclops feel like the leader of the team and actually do cool things and, and use his powers in cool ways to, to make it interesting. Um, visually, the show is great. It feels like an HD version of a, you know, of a, a Saturday morning cartoon. Um, and, and, and it, it works on that level. Um, I think the, you know, the story so far, I really like the idea of, uh, Magneto taking over the X-Men, um, after Professor X gets killed. I, I like that idea. I think it's an interesting conceit to, to give you something new and unique. Um, and because I think that at this point we've seen Professor X run the X-Men. You know, it's let's let's try something different. So it's this kind of weird power struggle between Professor X, between, uh, you know, Cyclops and, uh, what's it called? Cyclops and, uh, um... What's it called? Cyclops and uh, what's his name? Uh, and and Magneto. I'm sorry, I'm tired today. I think this is the best version of let's do a thing that happened in real life recently story because like, we talked about it a little bit with like, the Battle of Jetta being like this feels January 60. Um, I feel like this UN General Assembly meeting that Magneto is a part of is on trial during. Like, that feels like, like, and for that to become, like, a January 6th type thing, that feels like a, you know, a, a better, like, the best version of this. We've seen it a few times, like, this. There have been multiple procedurals that have done the same thing, because that's what procedurals do. Um, this just feels like the best version of it, um, which is, you know, refreshing. It's not the same, you know, it, it's not, it, it's taking a overly political thing, keeping it political while not you know, hitting you over the head with it, like, in a weird way, um, so I think it it was handled well, um, here, what else have we got that I wanted to talk about with this, I think that, um, 
I don't go that deep on the X-Men. Like, they're kind of my Marvel blind spot a little bit, where it's like, I don't know what's going on with this clone of Jean Grey, um, or this alternate version of Jean Grey that's shown up. Um, maybe we're dealing with multiverse shenanigans. Um, I'm not a huge fan of them depowering Storm this early. I'm not, like, you know... And, and we've seen it before where people, like, where mutants get depowered and then they get, you know, something happens and they get their powers back. We've seen it before. I mean, we saw it in fucking X-Men 3. Like, that shitty-ass movie had that. But, like, that's the thing. I don't think that she's going to be permanently without powers. Um, I feel like this is a move to move her out of play for a little bit because she's too powerful in the same way that, like, I think having Jean Grey become a mom is designed to not sideline her, but to take her out of the battle because she's too powerful. Like, we get that episode with the X-Men at the height of their power, so now they have to sit here and, okay, let's let's break it down a little bit. But yeah, I think these two episodes are technically very well made, very interesting, and they do fit the aesthetic of what they're going for. Um, I, it, it's the kind of thing where they keep me tuned in every week, because I think that, like, we talked about this a little bit with, uh, what was that show? Um, Fuck, what was it? Uh, WandaVision was the one. Um, where I was like, if this didn't have the Marvel logo in front of it, like, would I have still tuned in every week? And the answer to that was probably not. I don't think WandaVision did a great job of selling itself after that first, you know, episode of being like, okay, so here's, here's where we are. And here's why you should watch this every week. Like, it, it has a cool aesthetic, but it wasn't the kind of thing where it's like, okay, I will force myself to tune in every week. But because I have the Marvel Studios logo, and I'm like, okay, so this is, you know, canon to the MCU. I will tune in to watch this week in and week out. I don't think we have that really here. Um, I don't think we have a, a, a thing here where we're like, um, what's it called? Where we're like, dealing with a, you know... Like, th this show, I don't think it's going to be MCU canon, obviously. And I, I think it may be wider MCU multiverse canon. Um, like, I would say, we probably don't... This isn't even canon to, like, the alternate universe that, like, um, Monica shows up in at the end of the Marvels. Like, I would say that's an entirely different universe, but aesthetically it's going to match a little bit. I, I, I feel like this is going to be one of those, like... I'm still going to show up for this, though, um, because I'm enjoying it so far, um, and I care about these characters in a, in a weird way, like, even though, and, and the thing is, too, is my concern going into it was that I was like, okay, so this is going to be a revival of this show that aired, you know, 30 years ago, like, am I going to be able to jump right in having not watched it and, and, and understand what's going on, and the show did a great job of laying out the character dynamics and laying out, you know, who's, who's, you know, what their relationships are and, and where they are in this, you know, story, um, pretty well, to the point where I'm like, alright, I, I get everything I need to know, let's move on to the main part of the story and get into what's going on, and it doesn't feel ham-fisted or, you know, like, overly, what's the word I'm looking for here, or like, you know, quite as, you know, it, it's handled well, let's put it that way, um, but yeah, I think that this is, this, this is going to be a show that I'm going to enjoy watching, as long as I don't get too, you know, as long as it doesn't become too long in the two with me, I think the only concern I have is if they introduce, like, a season-long arc, um, and the season-long arc just goes on too long, we talked about it a little bit yesterday with the Bad Batch, with, you know, the mystery of the M-Count, uh, bounties, and it's like, well, we, the viewer, know the M-Count bounty is midichlorians, you're looking for Jedi, like, we, we know this, but the characters in the show don't, so we're three steps ahead, and we were just watching them try to figure it out for three episodes, like, alright, let's just move it along, please. Um, regardless, I think we'll wrap up there for today, because I think this is a, a solid one. Uh, place to leave off. Go watch X-Men 97. I think it's worth your time. Especially if you like that aesthetic of, like, 
you know, early 90s, mid 90s, like Saturday morning cartoons, even the 80s Saturday morning cartoons. Because they, while it is HD and it is like higher video quality, they do still capture the aesthetic very well of like this is what that kind of show felt like um, when it was airing on this network at this time. Um, so, you know, good for them for. for for managing that, um, but yeah, we'll wrap up there for today, um, so, for those of you looking for other content, tomorrow we'll be doing The Girls on the Bus, um, the new girl anti show over on Max, uh, with Melissa Benoist and Carlo Gugino, we will be continuing with that, we'll be catching up with The Regime on Monday, um, or Monday evening, um, what else have we got coming up, uh, Next week we have Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. That's cool. And then we have um, a bunch of stuff over on the Backlog Files, our video game podcast, available wherever you get your podcast. This is uh, where we can get, um, what's it called? We're going to be talking about Princess Peach Showtime next week. We're talking about Stardew Valley 1.6. We're talking about the Dune expansion. Um, on Exploring Hyperspace Lens, I think I'm going to put a stopgap episode where I give my thoughts on Battlefront, Battlefront 2 HD. Um, but we will wrap up there for today. And until our next episode, have a great rest of your week.